Here we're trying to find the convolution of two signals. One is a decaying exponential, e to the minus a t times u of t. So e to the power minus a t will look something like this. But when you multiply it by a unit step, it will look more like this. Because it will be zero for negative time. And we're convolving it with another signal, u of t. So you can try to imagine how this would look um, graphically, but mathematically, it's really straightforward. So the, um, the definition of convolution of two signals, x of t convolved with y of t is the integral of x of some other variable, not t, but tau in this case, times y of t minus tau. So remember, we're reversing it and we're shifting it. We're shifting it by t and we're reversing it. And we integrate over the variable tau. So in this case, it doesn't matter which one we choose, but if we choose this to be our x, then this will be our y. So the integration will look something like this. e to the power minus a tau, so we're replacing t with tau, times u of tau times y of t, we replace that with y of t minus tau, so that will be u of t minus tau, d tau. Now remember, when you multiply a function by a unit step, it allows you to replace the units, the limits of the integration. So let's remember what this looks like. So we have a decaying exponential. I won't draw that, I'll just draw the two unit steps. So we have a, a unit step that starts at tor equals zero. And we have another unit step that starts at tor equals t. So that could be here, t. So our unit step might look something like this. Now notice I've made a little assumption here. I've assumed that t is greater than 0. But that doesn't have to be the case. So t could be negative, and it could be positive, or it could be 0. So let's assume for now that it's positive. If I multiply those two by my exponential function, now the exponential function looks something like this. Then when is the product non-zero? So the product is clearly only non-zero in this window of time here between zero and t. So that means I can replace my limits, these integral limits, I can replace that with 0 and t, because we're only integrating over this short window. So it's e to the power minus a tor d tor. So the answer is minus 1 over a e to the minus a tor from 0 to t. If you substitute the limits, you get minus 1 over a 
e to the minus a t minus 1. Where did the 1 come from? Well, that's just e to the 0. And we can get rid of this minus sign. We can tidy it up a little bit and say 1 minus e to the minus a t. So that is my answer. But, but, remember that I said that that would only hold if t is positive. Remember we said that t could be negative. And if that was the case, if t was negative, then there would be no, no integration. The product would be zero. If it's positive, that's fine. But if it's zero or it's negative, when you multiply, you're just multiplying zero times zero times x of t. So what we need to say is this only holds if t is greater than zero. So we have to mention that otherwise it's equal to zero. Now, that's not a very elegant way of expressing it. So a deterministic solution would be to say it's 1 over a times 1 minus e to the power minus a t times u of t. Why am I multiplying by u of t? Because u of t, by definition, this is equal to 1 if t is greater than or equal to 0, or 0 if t is less than 0. And that is expressing exactly the same as I was trying to express there. So the final answer expressed deterministically is that there. So you need to include the unit step there. So that is your final answer.